Hi, this is Dr. Pat TV. We're looking at annual return rates. So a way to compare different types of investments. The formula that I'm showing you here uh, called the compounding annual growth rate. It's labeled that way in math circles. Um, it's a net effect. It's uh, like the effective rate. It's like the uh, annual percentage yield. But uh, this one's more for investments. You're comparing investments when you know that you're paying a certain amount. Like real estate, you've purchased the, uh, the, uh, the property and then a bunch of years later you sell the property and you kind of want to see, hey, what was our annual return rate on this? So that way you can use this to compare all types of investments. Okay, since we're talking like uh, property in that way, you usually have your beginning value, how much you paid for the property, and then you have your ending value, what you sell it for. And so it's the ratio of those, and then to the power, and the power has a fraction here of one over the number of years. And so if you purchased uh, some property for $100,000, that would be your beginning value. Let's say 10 years later, you sell it for $160,000. You'd put your ending value of $160,000 up on top here. And then we said 10 years, so then it, this would be a 1 over 10. And so when we do this calculation, and then minus 1 over here, when we do this calculation, we get a decimal version of the rate, and then move it to decimal places for your percentages. So that's the formula. I want to show you uh, an example of this, and I also want to show you the algebra where we get this formula. How was this formula made? Well, we're going to start with basically the, uh, the very basic future value and present value, 1 plus r to the t power. So this is our, our very generic compounding formula. And now how do we make this kind of more intricate, involved formula on top here? And so here's, the, here's our steps. Here's the algebra steps. So technically what we're doing is we're going to take this nice generic formula and we're going to solve for r. Okay, because this is what this is. This is basically that compounding annual growth rate. That's a rate that's R. So our first step to solve this is to get rid of that P. It's multiplying. So we'll divide both sides by the P. Okay, and that's where you get in that fraction. Ending value over beginning value. Future value over present value. You know, your starting value on the bottom. Your uh, uh, ending value on top there. Okay, so that's where that fraction is coming from. The next thing we need to do to solve for R, to get R by itself, is to get rid of this T. To do that T, to cancel that T, it's a power T. And to cancel a power T, we use the T root. So the T root here. And so basically, the, a 1 over T power will cancel a T power. And so that's what we're looking at here. And so that's where you're seeing this fraction in the formula, 1 over the number of years, because our time frame for this is years. And so when we're looking at an annual return rate of an investment over a period of years, your, uh, your T value is years. And then our last step to get R by itself is to get rid of this 1. And so we're going to subtract the 1, and that's why you're seeing that 1 there. And so that's the algebra to make the formula for our compounding annual growth rate. So this is a way that we can use to calculate how our investments have turned out. So now let's take an example of this. Uh, talking about property, I've got a property in 2004. I originally paid for this thing for 127.5. And then in the year 2008, I have a decision. Do I sell my property for 212 or do I hold on to it? Now, some of you who know the history, probably to yelling right now at the screen, sell, 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 because things went bad in 2008. And so then in 2011, when I finally did sell it, I sold it for 143.4. And so basically, the question I'm looking at is like, ah, oh, by not selling it at 212, how did that impact me in terms of the annual rate of return? Because annual rate of return, that's what we use to compare investments. All right, so let's take a look at that. So from 2004 to 2008, uh, we had a beginning value of 127.5. Ending value, I would have sold it at 212. It would have been for four years, so that's why I won fourth. And then when you do this calculation, uh, move the decimal places two places because this calculation actually gets you a 0.1356. So by moving it two decimal places, I get my nice percent. So if I would have sold it in 2008 for 212, I could have made an annual return rate of 1356. And if you talk to any investor right now, a return rate of 1356 is a great investment. Okay. And so that would have been great. Now, 
what actually happened by holding on to the property until 2011 what was my rate of return uh, the big change here are two changes my ending value is a 143.4 and my years is seven years this time my beginning value is the same because we're still talking about 2004 and then when we do this calculation notice what we get no it's not a typo it's only 1.69 so by not selling in 2008 I went from having a great four-year investment of 1356 to a seven-year investment of only 1.69 better than the savings accounts over that period of time but still not a great investment that way so there's some examples of uh, annual uh, growth rates annual rate of return it's great for uh, evaluating different types of invest investments uh, not just your, your uh, simple savings accounts those kind of things and so if you're comparing uh, growth in the stock market property values or other types of investments here's one way to do this calculate the rate of return and then you can compare your investments thanks and have a good day